So you're a DIYer and you want to maybe redo your basement. You want to hang some studs up on the wall because you want to put some drywall up there. I don't know what you do. But in order to do that like a pro, you're going to have to use this. This, my best friend forever, is a Tapcon. Now you can literally go to any big box store and find tap cons. Now we've done a couple other videos about how to attach the woodage to the concrete as short as cinder block. And a lot of people ask, well, what about the tap con? So today, by the end of this video, you're gonna know everything you need to know, why you're using certain tools, why you're using certain bits. And I guarantee you're gonna feel confident enough to attach those studs or build or frame out those walls in your own basement or whatever project you're working with. So first off, let's take a look at the tap cons. Why would I use a tap con over a standard regular screw? Well, first off, these screws here are way stronger than any general purpose screw that you would ever use on the market. If you're going down through cinder block, that's one thing, but if you're going down through the concretus, you need something that's super, super strong. And not only that, check this out. I put these tap cons in this cinder block couple years ago. So I did a previous video using a ram set and then I just used a couple tap cons to show the difference. These have been sitting outside in the winter and the rain, the springs, the summer in Ohio, and they still look real nice like. So you don't have to worry about your concrete being too moist and damaging these things over time. And they're also pretty simple to install. And that's why a lot of professionals use this. So that's why you want to use a tap con, but how do you use a tap con? So let's bring our cinder block back over and it doesn't matter if you're going through the concretus or a cinder block like we're doing today, it's all gonna be the same. So a lot of you are probably aware that concrete is way harder, stronger than a cinder block. These are pretty soft and easy to drill through. And even though the cinder block is still pretty soft, you definitely need a couple tools that are gonna to make your life way easier when installing these things. So the first tool that you're going to absolutely need to have is either a rotary hammer or a hammer drill. Now, if you're a DIY or a weekend warrior or just somebody that has a small project that they're only going to do like a one-off and not open up their own construction company, I would go with a hammer drill. Now, you don't have to go with an expensive brand like Milwaukee IA. You can literally find very cheap, inexpensive drills on Amazon or even the Home Depot Lowe's that have a hammer drill function. And the best way to tell that this is a hammer drill is that you can see there's a picture with a little, it's a little hammer right there. Now, let me show you the difference between a hammer drill and a regular drill and why you definitely wanna go with the hammer drill. So this hammer drill, every one of them out on the market, you can switch it from hammer drill mode to regular drill mode. If you have a regular cordless drill, it doesn't do vice versa. You only have the drill. Now, I had even mentioned to you that this is very soft. So we're just gonna go with a regular drill mode setting here and go down through this. I just like the smell of cinder block very much. Now remember, this took a little while and it was still going through a very soft cinder block. If you were going down through some construction grade concretus, it's gonna take you way longer. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this to the hammer drill mode simply by going like this. And now watch the difference. So the reason why it's called a hammer drill is because it's hammering that bit down into the cinder block. And that's why it's so much faster because it's actually hammering down like, like, like this. That's real NAS like. So that's number one. That's why you would want to use a hammer drill or something that has that function where it's hammering that bit down into the concretus or whatever you're doing. Now, the next thing we need to talk about with the hammer drill is the bit that I'm using. Now, if you're a pro, you already know this, but if you're not, you might not. And that's fine. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Now, there are a ton of different brand bits out on the market, and there's also different types of bits that are out on the market. You have bits for metal, you have bits for the woodage. However, what you need to pick up is a masonry bit. Now, again, there's a million different brands out on the market. I'm just using a skill. This is not an expensive case, but it does a very good job. And you can see on the back right there, it's for brick, cinder block, cement, all that good stuff. Don't get all worked up. Just grab a cheaper set and you're going to be good to go. All right, so how do I actually do this? How do I get my woodage to attach to the cinder block or a piece of concrete like the concrete floor that you're gonna build a wall out for? Well, let's take a look. This is a quarter inch tap con right here. It's a quarter inch by two, three quarters. Now, I think one of the mistakes comes in where they see a quarter inch, somebody might read that and say, I need a quarter inch bit to make my pilot hole down through the concrete edge. And that's not what you wanna do. It's pretty self-explanatory when you read the back of the tap cons. You're gonna need a 3 16th inch bit. And we'll talk about this other bit here after we, we do this. 
So this is my 3 16th inch bit. And the reason why I wanted it a little bit smaller is, well, let's just do a quarter inch bit and then I'll show you the right size. All right, so we switched our correct size bit into a quarter inch bit. Now I'm gonna just drive this down through. I got my hammer mode on, three, two, one. So now watch what happens when I go to throw my screw or my tap con into that. Way too loose, ain't grabbing on the side. Let's do it one more time. I'll go as straight as I possibly can down through this. So why did we have this issue? I mean, it says quarter inch tap con. Well, number one is when you start drilling in anything, sometimes your bit's gonna walk on you. What I mean by that, watch what happens when I pull this trigger. You're gonna see this thing move a little bit. It's gonna go like this because it's, it's trying to jump. I don't care how good you are, how professional you are, this is gonna happen, especially if you're making one hole after another. The other issue, just like anything else, if you're drilling down through, if you move this around a little bit, it's gonna go a lot faster. So if you're going through some super nasty, hard concretus, you're gonna go like this. Even if you don't mean to do that, you will probably do that. You're moving around a little bit when you're, when you're going down through this. So especially on something a lot softer like center block, you're gonna end up with a larger hole than what you wanted. But now let's take out the quarter inch bit and go with the 3 16th that they're saying on the back. And now we'll drill another hole. And now you can see that the hole is just the right size where I can still turn it, but it's not sinking down through into that center block. That's real nice like. So now you're gonna need another bit. This right here is a T30. Look at it. Look at it! You can see that it says up on the box right here, on the back anyway, that you need this size of bit. Now, if you don't wanna go out and buy an extra tool, some people will tell you that you can use your drill. You could take out your bit here and then add this. And then you could drive this down if you wanted to. Me personally, I don't like using my drill to sink tap cons. Let's pull this back up. If you're on a budget, I would get an impact driver. And again, it doesn't have to be a name brand. It can be a cheaper one. They're gonna do a pretty good job for a smaller job. So let's do this all in one step now. I'm gonna take my bit that I told you, the 3 16th, and my hammer drill. If you wanna turn off the hammer when you're going through the woodage, you can do that. I'm just gonna go down straight through. Pull that out. Now I'm gonna take my tap con and my T30. I'm gonna take this. Let's just do one more for a better viewing experience. I'm gonna go over here and bring this down. Pull that out, clean it out a little bit. I'm gonna take my tap con. Oh, I didn't go on my face this time. Do that, grab my bit with the impact driver. That's real nice like. So now your cement, your concrete, your woodage, and your tap cons are gonna be married for life. What I'm trying to say, it ain't going nowhere. Oh, and FYI, this is for demonstration purposes only. This is not treated woodage. If you wanted to use treated woodage, it's the exact same thing. It's not gonna make a difference, just treat it. Now, what you could do if you wanted to get everything plumbed out, straightened out, even out, whatever you want to do, you can put a tap con on here, put a tap con on here, and then you can change your bit out to a wood bit and just take the wood, you know, drill the pilot holes, and then change this into your hammer drill and boom, 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 down through all those holes, and then you would boom, 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 down through with all those tap cons. You do you. However, I just wanted to bring this video out because you know, a couple people would ask me if I could do that. I've had other videos where we were using ramp sets and attaching the, the woodage to the concreteage. And sometimes I need a break from the tool reviewing and just start doing. Let me know what you think in that sweet, sweet comment section below. If you want to check out the ramp set, the fun way of doing this, check out this video right here. Back more videos soon.